Today's New Testament reading is the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the seventh chapter. About the middle of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and began teaching. The Jews therefore marveled, saying, How is it that this man has learning when he has never studied? So Jesus answered them, My teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. If anyone's will is to do God's will, he will know whether the teaching is from God or whether I am speaking on my own authority. The one who speaks on his own authority seeks his own glory. But the one who seeks the glory of him who sent him is true, and in him there is no falsehood. Has not Moses given you the law? Yet none of you keeps the law. Why do you seek to kill me? The crowd answered, You have a demon. Who is seeking to kill you? Jesus answered them, I did one work, and you all marvel at it. Moses gave you circumcision, not that it is from Moses, but from the fathers, and you circumcise a man on the Sabbath. If on the Sabbath a man receives circumcision so that the law of Moses may not be broken, are you angry with me because on the Sabbath I made a man's whole body well? Do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. Some of the people of Jerusalem therefore said, Is not this the man whom they seek to kill? And here he is speaking openly, and they say nothing to him. Can it be that the authorities really know that this is the Christ? But we know where this man comes from, and when the Christ appears, no one will know where he comes from. So Jesus proclaimed as he taught in the temple, You know me, and you know where I come from? But I have not come of my own accord. He who sent me is true, and him you do not know. I know him, for I come from him, and he sent me. So they were seeking to arrest him, but no one laid a hand on him, because his hour had not yet come. Yet many of the people believed in him. They said, When the Christ appears, will he do more signs than this man has done? This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome Pastor Doug Minton. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father, through his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The word of God which calls for our attention this morning comes to us from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 7, read a moment ago. Jesus crashed his own feast when he came into Jerusalem. After telling his brothers, my time has not yet come, he came a couple of days later. Why did he come? He commanded every Israelite man to appear in Jerusalem for the feast. So he came. It wasn't his time, but it was his will. His time was quickly approaching. Jesus crashed the feast of booths so that he might send the Jews into a whirlpool of marveling. The questions surrounding Jesus swirled around in their minds. Many spilled out of their lips. Before he crashed the feast in the middle, everyone wondered where he was. Now that he was there, everyone wondered how he had learned everything he taught. He didn't sit at the feet of a great rabbi. Nazareth was not known for its schools. But Jesus' teaching inspired awe. And this awe cut both ways. People either love Jesus or hate him. There is no middle ground with Jesus. You are either for him or against him. You have questions about Jesus. Everyone does. But do these questions lead you closer to him or further away? Do they make your faith stronger or do they try to supplant your faith? Where do you go to find the right answers? Straight to the source. Has not Moses given you the law? Jesus points you to the scriptures. Before the writing of the New Testament, Jesus pointed to the Old Testament scriptures, all the way back to Moses where he promises to be found. Now that the New Testament has been written, Jesus points you not just to Moses and the prophets, but also to his own disciples, the men who studied at his feet. Listen to them for the answers to your questions. You certainly won't find the answer to every question while studying the Bible. Men and women have been studying the Bible for millennia and still have not exhausted its mysteries. But not having the answer should not discourage you. Rather, it should strengthen your faith. There are many things our human minds cannot comprehend. 
Luther himself said, whatever God does not tell you or does not want to tell you, you should not desire to know. And you should honor him enough to believe that he sees that it is not necessary, useful, or good for you to know. But everything you need to know about Jesus is in his word, where he continues to crash his own feast to deliver the forgiveness of your sins. Jesus crashes through everything that stands in the way of his plan of salvation. In our text, keeping those from laying hands on him because it was not yet his time. As little as six months later, Jesus' time would come. Then he would crash the feast of Passover with his death and resurrection. Jesus continues to crash his own feast to crash through your questions. Not that your questions are invalid or foolish. God gave you an inquisitive mind with just a hint of the original righteousness given to Adam and Eve. This image, though corrupted, leads your heart to seek what is missing. Jesus crashes your questions with the Holy Spirit and with his body and blood, not to squelch them, to prove that all the promises of God find their yes in him. While he doesn't answer all your questions, he answers the most important question. What am I missing? Why do I feel empty? Because you need Jesus, and Jesus comes to you, inviting you to his feast every Sunday. When the saints on earth join together with the eternal heavenly liturgy, here he crashes the earthly with the heavenly for the forgiveness of your sins, the sins of those dwelling in jars of clay, remembering our sin, celebrating our Savior. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.